40 million work hours, over 17 countries and 10 billion dollars. Being the largest and most expensive space observatory ever, James Webb Telescope will orbit the Sun one and a half million kilometers away from Earth at what is called the second Lagrange point, L2. We already explained in details about its launch and trajectory in our previous videos, and now we will talk about its instruments, capabilities and science goals. The primary goals of Webb are to study galaxy, star and planet formation in the universe, to see the very first stars and galaxies that formed in the early universe, to look deep into space, to look back in time, because it takes time for light to travel from there to here, so the farther out we look, the further we look back in time. The universe is expanding and therefore the farther we look, the faster objects are moving away from us, redshift in the light. Redshift means that the light that is emitted as ultraviolet or visible light is shifted more and more to redder wavelengths into the near and mid-infrared part of the electromagnetic spectrum for very high redshifts. Therefore, we have to observe infrared light and use a telescope optimized for this light. Star and planet formation in the local universe takes place in the centers of dense, dusty clouds obscured from our eyes at normal, visible wavelengths. Near-infrared light is less hindered by these small dust particles, allowing it to escape from the dust clouds. By observing near-infrared light, we can penetrate the dust and see the processes leading to star and planet formation. Objects of about Earth's temperature also emit most of the radiation at mid-infrared wavelengths. Webb's instruments are contained within the integrated science instrument module. The others are the optical telescope element and the spacecraft element. The science module houses the four main instruments. The instruments primarily have two functions, taking images of scientific targets and breaking down light into separate wavelengths to determine the physical and chemical properties of various forms of cosmic matter. The process is called spectroscopy. Webb's mirror segments are made from beryllium, with a thin coating of gold, which is both strong and light. Each segment weighs approximately 20 kilograms. Gold improves the mirror's reflection of infrared light. The Webb's team also decided to build the mirror in segments on a structure which folds up like the leaves of a drop leaf table, so the telescope can fit into a rocket and unfold after launch. It will be the largest mirror ever flow into space. Each of the 18 hexagonal shaped mirror segments is 1.32 meters in diameter, flat to flat. The hexagonal shape allows for a roughly circular segmented mirror with a high filling factor and six-fold symmetry, meaning the segments fit together without gaps. In order for Webb's primary mirror segments to act as a single optic, once in space, each of the 18 hexagonal segments must be aligned within a fraction of a wavelength mere nanometers, or about 10,000 times thinner than a human hair. Actuators or tiny mechanical motors provide the answer to achieving a single perfect focus. The primary mirror segments and secondary mirror are moved by six actuators that are attached to the back of each mirror piece. The primary mirror segments also have an additional actuator at its center that adjusts its curvature. The telescope's tertiary mirror remains stationary. One further challenge is to keep Webb's mirror cold, Webb primarily observes infrared light, which can sometimes be felt as heat. If Webb's mirror was the same temperature as the Hubble Space Telescope's, the faint infrared light from distant galaxies would be lost in the infrared glow of the mirror. Thus, Webb needs to be very cold. With its mirror at around minus 220 degrees Celsius, the mirror as a whole must be able to withstand any cold temperatures as well as hold its shape. To keep Webb cold, it will be sent into deep space, far from the Earth. Sun shields will shade the mirror and instruments from the sun's heat as well as keep them separate from the warm spacecraft bus. 
integrated four major instruments and numerous subsystems into one payload, the ISIM is a daunting endeavor. To simplify integration, engineers have divided the ISIM into three regions. The Region 1 component is the cryogenic instrument module. This chills the detectors down to 39 Kelvin, a necessary first stage cooling effort so that the spacecraft's own heat doesn't interfere with the infrared light detected from distant cosmic sources. The ISIM OTE thermal management subsystem provides passive cooling. Other devices will get the detectors even colder. The Region 2 component is the ISIM electronics compartment, which provides the mounting surface and ambient thermally controlled environment for the instrument control electronics. The Region 3 component, located within the spacecraft bus, is the ISIM command and data handling subsystem with integral ISIM flight software and the MRI cry cooler compressor and control electronics. NIR CAM provides high-resolution imaging and spectroscopy for a wide variety of investigations. It's web's primary imager and operates over a wavelength range of 0.6 to 5 micrometers. Where DAS becomes transparent, NIR CAM is equipped with chronographs, instruments that allow astronomers to take pictures of very faint dim objects around the central bright objects by blocking the bright light source useful in investigations seeking to determine characteristics of planets orbiting nearby stars. Near-infrared spectrograph, in addition to standard single-slit spectroscopy to gather spectra of specific objects, NIR spec is designed to observe 100 objects simultaneously. The first spectrograph in space with this multi-object capability. This is called micro-shutter array. NIR specs micro shutter cells, each approximately as wide as a human hair, have lids that open and close where a magnetic field is applied. Each cell can be controlled individually, allowing it to be open or close to view or block a portion of the sky. Near infrared sitless spectrograph, fine guidance sensor. It provides near-infrared imaging and spectroscopic capabilities. As the only instrument equipped with the aperture mask, this spectrograph has the unique ability to capture images of bright objects at a resolution greater than the other imagers. It operates over a wavelength of 0.6 to 5 micrometers. Housed in the same assembly as NIR ISS is Webb's fine guidance sensor, FGS. The FGS is a camera system designed to make sure web is stable and pointing in exactly the right direction throughout the observation. The FGS detects and identifies guide stars and ensures that web is locked onto those stars for the entire observation. Mid-Infrared Instrument or MIRI it provides imaging and spectroscopy capabilities in the mid-infrared wavelengths. MIRI is equipped with a camera, chronographs, spectrographs and an integral field unit, which is a combination of a camera and spectrograph, used to capture and map spectra across the field of view. MIRI operates over a wavelength range of 5 to 28 micrometers. As the only mid-infrared instrument, Astronomers rely on MIRI to study redshifted lights of distant galaxies, including newly formed stars, faintly visible comets and objects in the Kuiper belt. Because MIRI sees farther into the infrared than the other instruments, it has to be kept even colder than its counterparts. Webb's two-stage cryocooler works like the world's most effective refrigerator. The first stage brings MIRI's temperature down to 18 kelvins and the second stage brings the MIRI detectors to below 7 kelvins. That's just 7 degrees above absolute zero, the theoretical temperature at which all motion freezes, even the momentum of atoms. For the next five years, James Webb Telescope will have a unique and profound role in transforming our understanding of astrophysics and the origins of galaxies stars and planetary systems thank you for watching make sure to check our other videos about web telescope including its detailed deployment sequence